everyone Clyde on the set places places we've got a show to make here are Chris and Gabriel they are okay everyone in three two one and coming to you live from sunny Orlando Florida it's the great movie radio show A movie talk podcast starring Chris and Gabe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Great Movie Radio Show. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Chris, and as always, my awesome co-host Gabe is here. What's up, buddy? Hey, guys. I'm good. A little sad, you know. We're getting towards the end of the season. It's crazy. I know. I know. Wait. Wait. Why is she... Don't... Don't point that at... No! No! Oh, okay, run! Why? 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 I didn't miss this. I'm dying, though. By the way, but she missed. Miss she it. missed us, though. It's, oh, good. It's storm stormtrooper effect. You know, it just happens. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, our guest today is the wonderful Mary Linderman, or the Mary formerly known as Grievous, and she is the creator of what we knew around the GMR as the Pew Pew Cam. It was appropriate that we uh, provided a pew pew environment for our episode today. We're just going to call it the pew pew environment. Yeah. Yeah, but we got to make know. sure we don't shoot her, or then the episode is going <laughs> to still be a twenty minute episode. Folks. If if that, it'll be two minutes and just us talking. We shot her, and it's over. And then that's the end of the podcast because we won't. Uh, you know, we can't <laughs> afford to do the rest of the season. We can't start next season because of lawsuits. So yeah, we have with us today, like I said, the Mary, formerly known as Grigus, the wonderful Mary Linderman. Mary, how are you? It has been way too long. Hello, I am so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me, guys. <laughs> Yeah! Of course! It's a pleasure having you, and uh, like I said, you are the creator of the Notorious Pew Pew Cam, which were many videos, and I don't know, Vine, were they Vines back then? I don't even remember <laughs> oh, the recording. Know, um, Snapchat. Was it Snapchat? Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, it, nowadays it would be TikTok if it was still a thing. So Pew Pew Cam was a Snapchat shared amongst movie writers, and it was this little blue Star Wars pistol that we had. Uh, in the backstage area of the attraction, and Mary would pretty much just uh, genocide the entire uh, cast member family. It was it was uh, it was a dark time. She was the Anakin Skywalker. Of the <laughs> and younglings. <laughs> it's pronounced yingling. She, yeah. No, I don't like that. She was a wonderful coordinator to work with. Mary, I had the pleasure of working with you. Such a fun time. Really excited to go around the track with you because you got some great movies on your list. A couple of them I've never seen, and I'm actually really anxious to talk about them, especially your uh, mob crime movie. Uh, that's going to be a fun one. And surprise, uh, I haven't seen a lot of her movies. So that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm just here for com- comedic relief. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, uh... There's yeah, that's that. also, for, for all the listeners, we've decided we're not going to shoot Mary because in the episode will be cut short. So anytime I make a terrible joke or pun, they're just going to shoot me. So. We should just we should just have the pew-pew for, like, future episodes and anytime a bad joke is made, instead of a but um we have the... It's just, uh, you know, it's a good it's, idea. It's like a fast-forward but um So psh Yeah. So, Mary, tell us what years uh, that you worked at Great Movie Ride. So I was at Great Movie Ride from 2010 to the end. So 2000, um, September That's a really dark way of saying it, <laughs> till the end. And then she took herself with the pew-pew gun. I wish I could cue that sound whenever I wanted to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was there from September 2010 to August 2017. So almost, like just almost seven years. And you did, uh, you were a, you were a status coordinator when I was there, so I'm assuming you did other things as well. Yeah, uh, before. status coordinator, um, when I came to the ride, I did get, you know, uh, tour guide training, and I got gun training, because you had to for safety reasons, and then I 
briefly did like two shifts in gangster. Two shifts? Pretty like training and two so it's three shifts, yes. Wow. Nice. Alright. It was interesting. It was always fun. <laughs> I think one shift I didn't tell anyone I was going up there, like cast wise. So you would come out, you know, the balcony and the look on the tour guide's faces would be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Who is that? What is she doing <laughs> here? I want to say, and I, I could be mistaken, but I it's possible that that happened the day I was working, and it threw me off. And I, cause I remember there was like once or twice where someone that I would never have thought to be like walking out in a gangster costume, and I think you were one of them. And I was like, wait, what? What just happened? It could have been. <laughs> it's possible, yeah. I mean, I'm not it was, sure when it that... was fun shooting the gun, but like I said, I'm not a great actor, so I felt more comfortable as a tour guide. Uh, but yeah, the gangster is pretty, um, I'm trying to think of the word for it, like, you feel really satisfactory when you get to shoot out the light or, like, be mean to the guests. Yeah, it's a nice stress reliever, you know, decompress at the end of the day, you know, just <laughs> do one show, bam, bam, yell at the guests, and then they get off and like, all right, I could go home now, this is great. <laughs> I just wish there was a way to do it without having to be gangster trained. I mean, you could do it now, but you'd probably get arrested. <laughs> yeah. You just go take over the train. I'm like, all right. And like, people are like, what's, take what's over going the on? This is a stick up. <laughs> I, I, I am robbing the train. <laughs> we should all I guess, do, we I guess have a have bunch of movie there. writers just go, uh, just dressed up in movie ride costumes and go rob and yeah. hijack the railroad that would be whenever humorous. we could get into the park apparently yeah yeah like it's gonna be like three into. years so it's been 84 years <laughs> <laughs> mary what was your favorite section of gmr and why uh it was probably alien uh yes. i really enjoyed walking track in the morning when it was nice and quiet and like nobody was there to bother anyone uh, oh okay <laughs> but in general alien some of the maintenance guys would always find a way to scare me in Alien, whether I was opening or closing. <laughs> like, the audio would be muted, and then they would figure out when I would get to Alien, and they'd turn on the audio, and you guys know that that section is very loud. Very loud. No. Just the chains so, clinging and all oh, that. Oh, yeah. <sighs> and Especially sometimes, if the audio was messed up. Yeah. Sometimes it would snow in the... Uh, what do we call it, Gabe? The, is it liquid nitrogen or... Yeah, yeah. The fog effect. Yeah. Yeah. If it was too cold but nothing was turned on yet, it would just spit out like snowflakes. So you'd get towards the end right before Raiders and it would just be like, this one vent would just be snowing. <laughs> I remember there was one day, I think it was in Bandit, but, and I, and I think the SA doors were broken, but there was something wrong with the audio and messed up that, you know, you, if you really paid attention, you could hear the cat, but if you weren't really paying attention, you didn't hear the cat in the background. And for some reason, one day, the cat was louder than everything else. So because the SA doors were open, all you kept hearing was meow, meow. And we're like, what? What's going on over there? Why is it so much louder than the alien itself? Should have had one of these. <laughs> Get out. Okay. Do you have any favorite memories of working on the ride? So, one of my favorite stories I still tell to this day actually involves Gabe. Uh, it was backstage. Uh, the <laughs> many times that the Coke machine would break and give extra sodas. And I remember I have, that. I have a picture or a video somewhere of Gabe. I think the record was either seven or eight. Yeah, I had like seven sodas. I just kept spewing it out and I'm... I think I was like the mid that day and I came in and I just wanted a soda before I started and you were on break or something and I was and all of a sudden I went, what the hell, it's, keep, it's still going. And then you have the photo of me like carrying all the soda and I'm like, this is great, it's Christmas. And I like handed them out to people, I'm like, you get a Coke, you get a Coke, everybody gets a Coke. Yeah, that was a, that was a great machine when it broke down because it would do that. <laughs> when it broke, it was well, great. you would get used to it doing it and then they fixed it and you'd be like, oh, no more. No more multiple sodas for free. No. How dare they? Uh, if we're talking like other great moments for when I was working, I just think any time we got to deal with a celebrity was either a very good story or a very bad story. <laughs> I think John 
John Stamos was everyone's favorite because yeah, when yeah. he got off the ride, he would if if he had you in his view sight, he would come up to you and like shake your hand and be like, "Thanks for you know working, had a great time." Uh, we've had you know Chris Evans, oh, and then uh, speaking of pew pew guns, I miss when we used to have Star Wars <sighs> weekends because upstairs used to be the holding area for everyone that was a character. And or they would celebrity. come down the hallway. Oh yeah, uh, back um, hallway that just Boba Fett all of them at once. Scare me all the time. <laughs> or Darth oh, Maul. I would like literally sitting in triple C, and I hear some rustling back when we used to keep the doors open, and mm -hmm. I would hear rustling and I would turn and Darth Maul is just standing in the hallway. <laughs> I think, I think there was once or twice where they've like come into the triple C or they were like just hanging out backstage to just kind of like throw us off and like weird us out. I don't know if you were there for that. Uh, maybe not that exact day, but I've had like Stitch uh, sneak up on me. I've had Minnie Mouse just like walk into <laughs> Triple C. And oh, you're just man. like, what? I work at Disney. And then of course you had uh, what's her name hanging outside the front of the building trying to catch Luke. Oh god. Oh, Linda Luke, Skywalker. Linda Skywalker. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That was... Why would you bring up that name? <laughs> I am very sorry. I had to. And then I think my last fun story is um, when CDS, the printer broke and it wouldn't print anything for like three days straight. I think, wow. Gabe, at that point you were already gone. We made like a paper streamer. When I, when I finally got to work again, it printed out everything from the past three days. <laughs> oh, and so me I, and Chip I, and Andrew I Marty like that. strung it. And it still wasn't as long as a CVS receipt. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, I remember like, like it, the printer always breaking, and then you like get like the next five things, and I was like, great, but I don't remember it that much. Oh, I would be crying. Yeah, I think it was like literally the last couple of months before we closed. And it was like two days of like dealing with it, and then I finally somehow got it to work. And then for like an hour straight, it was just printing stuff. Oh man, I I don't think I was there for that. I'm trying to remember. There were so many so many bonkers situations that just happened while we were there that it's, some of them just kind of combined in my brain. Yeah, like the two weeks straight of the 3 p.m. fire. Uh, light going on on dock. Oh no, <laughs> the fire thing. Ugh. Oh my I've God. blocked that from my memory. <laughs> I think as as a coordinator, I like gave you've bought up in prior shows, like like talking about being a show observer or a trainer. Is that there was a lot of fun times to be had, and I really wanted to be included in those fun times. But it was really hard as a status coordinator because then I would have to be like, "No, guys, you gotta stop this." <laughs> But For in my sure. head, I would be like, that's really funny. <laughs> Mama like, Mary says no, but uh, inside I'm laughing. Yeah. Most of the time, it was probably me like, Gabe, stop doing that. That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was surprised. always the hardest as a coordinator because you would, you wanted to explain that to like the younger kids, but then they would use it against you. Like, Yeah, it was like, it should have been like the, you know. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I had a little bit more shenanigans when I was younger, but as I got older, I think the the biggest thing I got away with, obviously, was pew pew cam. And even that was just backstage. <sighs> yes, I did not film anything uh, on stage. Yeah. No, I did. I did a lot of shenanigans on stage that nobody knew about. Did you say shenanigans? Shenanigans. <laughs> I don't there know what that go. was. Mary, do you have any cast members or trainers you want to give a shout out to before we move on to your top five? So Nicolette was my, my trainer and uh, I bless the day that I got her because I feel like she was like the perfect trainer, just like tough love and like, hey, like, you know, it's day three and you're like, okay, let's go do a dead A and then you walked out and it was live and then there's Nicolette in row one. She's like, well, get to it. <laughs> this is your live show. So... I, uh, I'm not very good at, um, improv or acting. Funny enough, I came from the Backlot tour where I spieled, but for some reason I feel like Great Movie Ride deserved better acting. So I was always nervous, even to the last day, always nervous giving, you know, being a tour guide, but 
I say she trimmed me really well and then Melissa Keeley was my assessor so that ended well for me and then uh, my shout out is to my coordinator crew Dave Chelsea Marissa and Eric and Gabe and Gabe what? <laughs> It's fine. I'm not. I'm bitter at all. It's fine. It's fine. No, I know. I was randomly there, mostly during Christmas time when I'd work like a hundred hours. And now it's time for top five. Uh, so we're gonna dive into your top five before we jump onto the track. Um, hit up number one, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's been talked on before, but let's hear from you why it's your number one movie of all time. So growing up, uh, my mom loved Monty Python, like loved it. Like I didn't realize that that wasn't something that like six year olds normally watch because she had like the whole series on VHS. And then we, I pretty sure I've been watching that movie since I was like five years old, like in the late 80s. It was just always something that my mom put on and, you know, same thing, like didn't realize that wasn't the normal type of humor that everyone usually did for comedy. So when I was older and I would tell people that was my favorite movie, they'd be like, why? <laughs> Monty Python's so weird. And I'm like, well, it's good. It's really funny. It's got some really great one-liners. Awesome. Um, number two, we have talked about before as well, The a Princess Bride. Um, yes. What about that makes it your second favorite? Oh, it's like the best romance ever. I feel like I, when I was growing up watching the movie, I always wanted to be Princess Buttercup. Because I had a crush on, uh, I always butcher his name. Is it Carrie Ells or Carrie Elwes? It's your crush. Say it how you want it. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm sorry, you tomato, said, tomato. You okay. Said this was the best romance? Uh, you, I, for me. Did you forget Corey and I? I'm just the same. <laughs> oh, okay. For a, for a young kid, girl, for a young girl growing up, I feel like The Princess Bride was like the best romance. And same thing, I kind of like really loved Andre the Giant when I saw him in that movie. And then I really got to like. Um, Inigo Montoya, I think his name is Mandy Patikin. It was just, it's such good casting the whole way around and just the whole storyline and same thing. Great comedy and great one-liners. Awesome. Um, so number three, I want you to touch on it briefly because we're going to come back to the Dark Crystal a little bit later. But just briefly, why is it on your list? So I am really fascinated by movies that have practical physical effects. So puppetry is like high on my list because I grew up, you know, Jim Henson stuff, Fraggle Rock, all that stuff. So movies that need to be in a soundstage or have puppets like just grab me and it's same thing. It's um, the fantasy storyline and mixture of- Man, if puppets grabbed me, I would be scared. <laughs> I feel like that's a TV show or a horror film somewhere. <laughs> I mean, as much that, as I love Mupp the Muppets, if it was like, rah, I mean, I don't know. what is it? What was that puppet movie, The Happy Time Trails or whatever? That was Happy horrible movie, like The that? Happy Time Murders. I didn't even I watch seen it. That. I feel like that. That's that's a when a that, puppet might come and grab you. It's gonna be a horrible letdown if I ever do watch it because I was like so ready for it and then. It came out and it got like a ten, and I was like, I don't even want to touch this movie. Don't don't even. Wanna. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I, I hear that you can not see it and uh, not I'd miss probably out. be fine with that. But yeah, puppetry in general, like growing up in the era of Muppets and Fraggle Rock, when my mom introduced me to Dark Crystal, it was like instant love. Nice. Well, it's the perfect segue into number four, Labyrinth. Obviously, also, I. Yeah, also a lot of puppets. Um, what do you like about this movie that's different from Dark Crystal? Because, like, I always, like, I remember as a kid, like, growing up, I would always get them confused because I was, like, small and my brain was like, <laughs> mm, I don't want to remember things. I was like, wait, which one's which again? And then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But what do you like about the Labyrinth that's different from Dark Crystal? Well, I think I saw Labyrinth first before Dark Crystal, but Labyrinth has obviously human actors. 
whereas Dark Crystal's all puppetry. So Labyrinth feels different to me because it has David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly, and it has music. Dance, <laughs> sings magic, in dance. Yeah, right? Oh, man. So this, that one has the songs that you just, you know, end up singing while you're watching the movie. And I just like David Bowie in general as a musician, so... I think that's what I met him as an actor first and then my mom was like hey that guy's a musician and I was like cool what's his music and then I grew up liking him that way too nice now we're gonna wrap up with your number five before we jump onto the track Kung Fu Hustle oh yeah have you guys seen this movie I'm sure yes. Chris has. Yes. Uh, yeah there he is <laughs> yes. um, I've only seen like clips and like little snippets on TV. I haven't like sat down and watched the full movie before. So Kung Fu Hustle, I think it's made by the same guy that does Shaolin Soccer, but I did yeah. not see Shaolin Soccer, unfortunately. I haven't seen that either. Um, it's a comedy, and the best way to describe it is just that there's this guy that he really wants to be a gang member, and he tries to prove himself to be like tough, but everyone else around him is tougher until the end it's it's almost like the matrix at the end he gets his full powers and he's fighting this big i think they're called the uh, the axe gang and they're all wearing black and he's wearing white and i remember seeing this movie and literally going oh my god this is like like neo and agent smith except for it's a you know martial arts movie so it's got a lot of comedy um a lot of martial art fighting for sure. I mean, I've yeah, like I said, I've seen clips on it and like hilarious. I've just never found it where I could actually like sit down and watch it. Um, but Netflix. every time I see it, it reminds me of like uh, Kung Pao. I don't know if you ever seen that movie, but it's very similar. Yep. Like, to me, go for it, Chucks. I was gonna say that's that's on. Uh, I put that on my guilty pleasure, Kung Pao <laughs> Enter the Fist. But oh. I don't want to go off on a tangent because I love that movie almost as equally if not even more but that movie's really obscure so i usually don't introduce people to it no it should be on um, you know it, tmc's top 100 <laughs> which one oh, kung pao i was gonna say which one <laughs> kung pao i haven't both. seen kung fu hustle so how would pao. i say that i could okay yes kung pao absolutely adore it but you have to be like in the mood to watch it it's just stupid good fun <laughs> it's like me stupid good fun <laughs> Well, Christopher, shoot. shoot. Say thank you. It's time to go around the track. Ready when you are, CB. Awesome. Um, so now um, we're going to jump on to everybody's favorite part of the podcast. We're going to go around the track. Uh, genre by genre and talk about your favorite movies so jump on board and here we go um so we're gonna start off in musical and um we're gonna touch on a movie i don't think we've touched on at all um sadly i know it but never seen it bed knobs and broomsticks yes this movie's a classic that's what I hear, and like looking at it, it's like you could tell it's very much, you know, it's like 1971, so it's very much old school and reminds me a lot of Mary Poppins. But yeah, I've never seen it, so tell me what it's about, why you like it, and any fun stories you have about it. Okay, Angela so ben, Lansbury. Sorry. Angela Lansbury and the the actor from Mary Poppins. Um, uh, what's his name? David Tomlinson. He plays the father in Mary Poppins. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's you're Tomlinson. right. Tomlinson. Yeah. So, I haven't seen you in a while. Bed Knobs and Broomsticks takes place in, I want to say, like, a coastal town in England during the World War II era. And it's all about uh, kids. These three kids get moved because it's, I think it's not safe in their town and their parents, like, send them elsewhere. So they get sent to Angela Lansbury, who is, I think she's like a museum housekeeper or something like that but she's also a uh, practicing witch so uh, I want to say she there is a song where she does like a levitating spell or like a spell where she brings like clothing to life um, but basically they also use somehow this magical 
bed knob that when you screw it into the bedpost, it takes you to a different country, and that's where the movie turns into animation. Oh, sweet. So it was kind of like Mary Poppins. Nice. Okay, yeah, like, looking at, like, on IMDb and seeing stuff, like, even the poster, it very much, like, has that, like, <laughs> you know, real actors animation style, but, like I said, I've never seen it, but if Angela Lansbury is in it, then, you know, gotta put I, it on my list of many movies I haven't seen while recording this podcast. I'm reading a review on Letterboxd right now, and it's two sentences, and I gotta say this without the, uh, explicitives, but... Angela Lansbury plays a witch who F's up a bunch of Nazi a-holes. They just don't make family films like they used to. Four stars. <laughs> what you oh, should have done man. is, instead of saying the curse word, just shot off the gun. But it's fine. Oh, I can do it. I can redo it then. Redo it. But don't mess Angela up. Lansbury plays a witch who up a bunch of Nazi holes. They just don't make family films like they used to. Four stars. That's the review. That's wonderful. Beautiful. I, you know, I'm gonna go to this person for all my movie reviews now. Um, it's sorry, Matt Shiverdecker. <laughs> don't That's the guy's me. name. I don't know him. Don't. Well, Matt Shiverdecker, I'm coming to you for all my reviews. So, <laughs> I hope you're listening. <laughs> um. So what? So you talked about it. Uh, what scene would you put? In the great, in your great movie ride, uh, it would probably be the song where she makes the clothing levitate. Uh, the so- the uh, song is called "Substitutionary Locomotion." Okay, not gonna say that. <laughs> gonna mess, mess uh, that one up. She's got like a Latin phrase that she has to chant to make the clothing, uh, um, le- you know, become to life, and the spell is called "Substitutionary Locomotion," and then. I could not tell you the words for the life of me. But basically in the movie, what happens is once she realizes that she can, the spell works, she literally makes like armor come to life, like knight, knights and like old um, war uniforms. And there's a part where the Nazis attack their town and she literally beats the snot out of them using these levitating uh, clothing with like That's nobody in spot. them. Yeah. That's a good one. Nice. Um, so we're going to keep it in musical for a little bit, because obviously musical was a big scene. It had multiple. Uh, we're only going to do two instead of the three, but we are going to go to your number three um, favorite musical, The Greatest Showman. Um, why is it your favorite? Oh, uh, that, sh- that movie is like an earworm. I don't know what about it when it came out, but like it spoke to me. <laughs> Every song is, like, amazing in my head. Uh, I could watch that movie probably once a day, like, every day, if I had to. I think we listen to the soundtrack a lot. It doesn't get old. It's very, like, it's a story that's already been told about, you know, um, I can't even think of his name. Is it? Barnum and Bailey? Barnum, it, yeah, that... Barnum. I mean, yeah. the story itself has been told so many times. It's just obviously when you get the right the right writers and the right actors together it's kind of refreshing to have a little bit different story yeah for sure and i feel like you know you were talking about the music and i feel that's what like separated it from you know a lot of movie musicals that would like that are trying to tell stories that weren't based off like a broadway musical it the the soundtrack alone was very well written and, and all that stuff even though the movie got some backlash because they're like oh it's not 100 percent true he was actually you know whatever but um I don't let that bother me because, you know, it's it's a movie. It's not like, you know, they said, this is a documentary and this is all true. So, But uh, what scene from The Greatest Showman would you put there? Probably the the, the big song, the, I can't even think, uh, where everyone's singing uh, together. Gotcha. Well, I call Bearded Lady, so. <laughs> you got to sing the high part of that song then. You got this, Gabe. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Well, <laughs> uh, Chris just whacked me in the stomach or something. Yeah. So the song's uh, called "This Is nope, the Greatest not Show." With the gun. <laughs> not with the gun. Chris. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the song is called "This Is the Greatest Show." Yeah. So that sounds. Right, I would. Yeah. yeah. I would have that one. Everybody um, knows what you're talking about. It's, it's yeah. Really good. Yeah. You oh, have awesome. to say which one it is. It's, it's the big song. The, in they know movie. the big song. They're, yeah, the big they're song all with catchy. The people in the, tunes i it's a good soundtrack we uh when the we are uh, when my theater reopened post covid um we actually had 
uh, a theater rental program. We had a couple pop stars come and rent out a couple of auditoriums to watch The Greatest Showman with like their crew. And uh, I will not name names because I don't want to. Yeah, but it was it was kind of cool to see like people in the music industry come and watch and like celebrate this this movie. Nice, that's awesome. All right, so we are going to leave the happy go lucky musicals and head into the dark underworld of the mob scene. Um, but <gasps> you're how dare you? How <laughs> dare you? It's a shot in the dark. Right, you should. No, there's a light on in my room. It's not in the dark. Okay. Anyways, we're going to twist it up a little bit. Now, I haven't seen this movie, but Chris and I were talking about it. We're looking it up. And it's a mob comedy-ish. Uh, Johnny Dangerously. Tell us about that, because neither Chris or I have seen this movie. You guys have not seen that movie? Oh, my goodness. Okay. I know Johnny- about it, but I just I never got around to seeing it. I mean, and I was also born in 85, and it came out in 84. I blame my parents for not Yeah, I was like a year old when it came out. I didn't discover it until I was like 20. So Johnny Dangerously has Michael Keaton in it. Uh, So 1984, is that pre or after? That's before Batman, right? Yeah, it's five years before because that was 89. But you have Michael Keaton and DeVito together. Yeah, so it's basically, it's a gangster movie, but it's, it's more like a spoof, a parody. Uh, he's basically, he's the good boy who lives at home with his mom, and then his mom gets sick, and I think his brother ends up doing something that he goes to jail, jail or something like that. So he decides that he has to turn to a life of crime to help out his family, but his family can't know. So his, uh, his secondary name, his original name is Johnny Kelly, and then his, his secondary name is Johnny Dangerously. I can do uh, that. Yeah, but I think growing up, like, you know, you see spoof movies, like, you know, Scary Movie and um, other stuff. I didn't realize what that it was a spoof or a parody movie until I saw it, like, four times. I was like, oh, this is just a really funny take on gangster movies. And then I realized, like, oh, okay. They're technically making fun of it, but it's really good anyways. Honestly, sometimes those are, like, the best kind of, like, parody spoof movies when you don't realize and you're like, oh, okay. Because obviously there's, like, two ends of the spectrum. Like, there's that where you kind of, like, oh, I see what they're doing now. Okay, I get it. And then there's, like, you know, scary movie and all that stuff where it's very blatant and you're like, oh, they're making fun of them. Yeah, or um, don't be a menace in South Central Central. while drinking your juice in the hood. Juice in the hood. (laughs) Exactly. Also another great movie. Um, (laughs) So obviously, besides it being a spoof, like what about it made it like one of your favorite? Well, it had a really great cast. It, it, uh, cast. It had. Uh, it had. And again, I never really knew their names in general, but it had Mary Lou Henner. It had uh, Joe Pis- Piscopo. Uh, I'm gonna sure, be names listening. left and right. It had Dom DeLuise. It had Dane DeVito. Like the Peter Boyle. Just a, yeah. The, oh, yeah. Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle's the guy who narrated, who is the grandfather from Princess Bride, right? He was in Young Frankenstein. I know that. Was he in Princess Bride? Oh, too? Peter Boyle. I'm confusing him with someone else. I would yep. not be good at that Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game. <laughs> not at all. Yes, Peter, Peter Boyle. Boyle was Peter Frankenstein Boyle's Frankenstein. In Frankenstein. Yes. Frankenstein. I'm confusing him with, with Columbo from the the grandpa from Princess Bride. Yeah, like yeah. Is, is it Peter Falk? I think so. It's been a while since I've seen it, and there's so many good people in it that I can't remember all. <laughs> but yeah, Johnny Dangerously, his accent, I remember when I started Great Movie Ride, he does a very, like, James Cagney accent. He does a lot of whole, like, yeah! And someone asks him that's his name, just and he's Keaton, like, man. Johnny! Johnny Dangerously! Like, that's how he literally just, like, makes his name. Nice. Um, so what scene from that movie would you put? Uh, now remember, this is the gangster scene, so we have to like try to try to make it incorporate a way for the uh, well, gangster to take over. That's gonna be. <laughs> it's a, just uh, just tell me what scene, and then no, some I weird way I'll make it work. We'll, I feel we'll like creative. I feel like there's a together. scene where he's walking down the street as a gangster and he sees his mom and he's got to hide. Like, I feel like there's some scene in the movie where he's trying to be the one character 
and he comes across other people where he's got to hide. I feel like that would be a great scene to, like, get on the vehicle, like, you know, he can't have his mom seeing the fact that he's a gangster. That'd if that makes sense. You could have gotcha. the tour guide get off for some random reason, and then he runs on I mean, and hides from mom. I mean, honestly, you, like, you do the whole, hey, come here. I need you to distract my mom for a minute. I need yeah. to sneak away. Can't see, I don't know. Like, put a fun twist on it. Like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll think about it, and, and when we create your ride, we'll, we'll have something set for you so that it's great. But That would be fun, though, because you'd have to come out and talk like Keaton. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part in Batman. I really I'm do. Batman. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, what? Whoops. Well, so, that's it for me, folks. Um, I was going like to say. I'm going to go talk to mom and try to distract her for a little bit. You? That was for the red light. Yeah, okay. Sure it was. I promise. Well, it looks like I'm taking over the ride here in Gangster, and when we return, we'll be going into Western. We'll be right back on the great movie radio show. Shut up, you two. You want to blow our cover? Psst. Hey, you. You're listening to the great movie radio show starring Chris and Gabe. Don't nobody move until we get back, or else, if you know what I mean. Warning, remain on this podcast. The advertisement you are experiencing is extremely dangerous. Proceed with caution. Autumn Star Entertainment is an independent producer of movies and video. Their goal is to provide Hollywood-level entertainment for low to no budget. Check them out on Facebook.com slash Autumn Star Entertainment or on Twitter at Autumn Star ENT. Hey, what are you looking at? Hit the subscribe button to catch more of the great movie radio show starring Chris and Gabe, and maybe you won't get hurt. Here they come, boss! You look at the, the red light. Turning the red light's against the law, and I would never break the law. No more red light. Hi there, great movie radio show fans. My name is Dalton Burdett, and I'm here to tell you about the Movie Nights. Well, what are the Movie Nights? The Movie Nights are a small production company out of Orlando, Florida, responsible for award-winning short films, podcasts, and a variety of movie-loving content. And we are also new partners of the Great Movie Radio Show. So. For some more movie-loving content that you guys will probably enjoy, please head over to our YouTube channel, Movie Nights, and you can find the exact link at youtube.com slash c slash movie nights, and also be sure to listen to our podcast hosted by me and my partner Ryan Warner on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. And yes, Movie Nights is spelled with a K because we think we're clever. Time for Chris and Gabe hosted a great movie radio show to get back to work. I better lay low for a while, the heat's on. On second thought, I could go for some popcorn. All right, and we're back on the Great Movie Radio Show. We're going in to the Western section, segment, scene, place. And we're going to talk about your third favorite Western because we've talked about Butch Cassidy and The Searchers. I mean, it's on the ride. Everyone knows about it and has talked about it probably. But Young Guns has not been brought up on the show. And I would like to talk about it because it's probably been about 20 years since I've seen it. (laughs) 20 years? It's been 20 years. Uh, What about Young Guns makes it one of your favorite Westerns? The cast. It's a good it cast. is the prime. It's like, I think it's legit. Like, I, I want to say it's like they call it the Rat Pack of the '80s. It's got you know, Emilio Estevez and uh, Kiefer Sutherland and Charlie Sheen and Lou Diamond Phillips. And I feel like there's like one more guy that I forget if he, oh Dermot Mulroney. I always can confuse it's a, him. It's and, a fun name to say. No, Dermot Mulroney, that whole thing about Dermot Mulroney and Dylan McDermott, how everyone keeps confusing those two guys. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah, know no, Terrence Stamp was in it. I forgot about that. Yeah, I forget if he's the uh, 
I, last time I watched it was on an airplane. I forget if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Locke from uh, Lost, isn't it, too? Yeah, Terry, Terry O'Quinn. O'Quinn. Mm-hmm. He, played, uh, he played Howard Hughes in The Rocketeer. Ah, I was mm-hmm. just watching another movie the other day that he was in, and I could... Oh, uh, he was in uh, Tombstone. Yeah! He was the mayor of the town. Which That's is your right. fourth favorite Western movie. <laughs> She's Six just a Terry. Mary Griggs. I'm, I'm She's you, just I, a Terry O'Quinn fan, man. That's I just, all I is. just, I just want like if we go into Western, like I'm all about Young Guns, but I just want Doc Holliday's Val Kilmer just to be in the corner when you get in, and I just want him to like tip his hat and just say, "I'm your Huckleberry." <laughs> I was gonna suggest we should just turn this into the Terry O'Quinn great movie ride, <laughs> but we can, we can stay on with that. Yeah, I feel like every episode of the podcast the last couple of times we've talked about our ver- their version of great movie ride but then it's also got spin-off versions of other rides yeah so by the time this season's over we're gonna have a whole park filled with rides <laughs> just clear out hollywood studios star wars included and we'll just put all these knockoffs so the cast is what makes it for you oh yeah i feel like uh i've always had a thing for 80s movies so when oh, yeah. uh uh, my husband Wayne, this was like one of his uh, what, you haven't seen this movie? So we watched it like on a flight to like Philadelphia or something like that the first time. And of course people that were sitting next to us were like watching the movie with us. Like, you know, the whole the whole I'm gonna sit next to you and I can't hear what you're doing, but this movie looks good. So like the people are like oh, you yeah. know, leaning like trying to watch it probably. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like um that whole cast was really great and they all had you know great comedic touches and some really great lines and they were all just young and angry <laughs> like i feel like emilio estevez's character was the angriest but emilio <laughs> they were just they were just all you know um i know it's not not the line from well, that was, movie he but was billy the kid right emilio i think but it's uh that movie reminds me of just that one movie where someone's like, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. Like, that's why I feel like the actors are playing really well the entire time. And of course, they just well, keep If I remember, angry, someone angrier. that's like close to all of them gets murdered and they're all like, yeah, we're going to kill was, um, everyone involved or something. Um, the, their benefactor, uh, I forget his name. Some John dude. Tunt. Oh, oh, it was Terrence Stamp. That was their. That was their benefactor. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Again, I haven't seen it in twenty years. So, oh, yeah. Remember so, all of it. so he gets killed, and they they pretty much just go avenge him. I mean, that's a good reason to be mad. Yeah. If you ask me. Well, it's because it, they want to go avenge him, and then the other guys are pretty much just like, "We're just gonna keep shooting at you." So. I mean, I'd say half of the movie is just literally gunfighting. Make for a good western scene. Yeah. So you Which uh the Avengers? No, not <laughs> no. Wait, what? No. It's okay. It's wrong, fine. Gabe. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll, I'll accept that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, what scene from Young Guns would you uh would you put into the uh, the western area? I'm assuming it's going to be one with gunfighting because why not? Probably there was one. <sighs> There's one gunfight. I'm pretty sure that the the actor who played Locke was also a good guy because I think that they were all holed up in his house, and because the the bad guys were trying to kill him and they were trying to protect him, so I could see that happening where where the bank is could be that actor that that character's house, and then you know everyone's out front hiding behind like the fence or like you know the brick wall or whatever, trying to shoot at the bad guys who are across the street. Hmm. Now I wonder if there's a way to incorporate that into the western scene for Bandit. I know we're not doing well, a Bandit show. I wonder if the show, house. But... I want. I feel like the house may have caught fire too. That would be really convenient if it did. It would be. Well, maybe, maybe the the Bandit thinks that the tour guide, you know, killed him, and he's trying to avenge his his death by mm. shooting off the tour guide. And I don't know shoot me it's fine <laughs> well i was gonna say if if this would be the 
if the gangster's still in the vehicle, then you just ride through. But if this is a bandit, then it would probably be one of the crew being like, I gotta go get more supplies or something like that. And they would get your vehicle to be like, you know, I gotta go back to the ranch and get more ammo or something like that. It's your it's your ride. We we'll can it we can do whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I've seen it so long. I really I'm like I would like. I know. To further input thing, into that this, one I haven't I don't seen know. in a while. I I feel like if you just rode through because the gangsters on your vehicle, then it'd be perfect because just the there are, yeah, yeah, it would just be one of the many shootouts they have in that movie. Typ- typical western movie. But with Emilio Estevez. Can we have Will Ferrell, like, lean out of the back with, like, the suit on from Night of the Roxbury and be like, and I was like, Emilio! <laughs> Just because? Chris, Chris, Chris. <laughs> the gun, please, the gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be this whole episode. <laughs> it's going to be the whole Is it going to be Emilio or the gun? Both. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to go into sci-fi fantasy, and your favorite movie uh, in the sci-fi realm is Aliens, um, but we've talked about that and The Fifth Element, which is your number two. Um, We did discuss it briefly uh, in your top five, but Dark Crystal really hasn't been talked about on the show before, and uh, I'd like to go into it further and also hear what scene you put on it, because Dark Crystal is freaking amazing. And it is amazing. Like you were saying, but I didn't want to interrupt if I didn't have to. Um, I agree with the whole puppetry arts um, uh, set. I I loved movies like that growing up. I was huge on the Muppet movie. Huge on... It's funny, I never saw Dark Crystal, but I saw Labyrinth. Um, and I saw Dark Crystal uh, a couple years ago for the first time, maybe? I don't even know. I don't know how it slipped past me, but like Fraggle Rock and Muppets and Sesame Street, I grew up on all that. So... They uh, they did a wonderful job with the film, and then there was the uh, the Netflix series. Yeah, I still need to really sit down and watch. Oh, it's it's good. It's just when a movie has a certain way of beginning and ending, and then they do a prequel. It's like that's cool, but like the movie already defines how something happens, and they want to do a prequel, and you're like, this is a great TV series. It's just I wish that they had a different like storyline. I wish they had just done like. It was Some a prequel? Kind of, the TV series is the prequel okay. to Dark Crystal. Got it. Yeah. I I want to say I knew that, but I also just kind of lost <laughs> track of it because I hadn't watched it, so. But yeah, at that movie, I'm pretty sure Dark Crystal, like, the first time I saw it, I probably got really scared as a kid. Like, Labyrinth didn't scare me for some reason, but Dark Crystal has some amazingly terrifying creatures. Dark Crystal also didn't have David Bowie. <laughs> That's true. If it makes you feel better, uh, I had a really bad nightmare when I watched the Power Rangers movie. Nope. Because Ivan Ooze scared. Ivan Ooze scared? <laughs> yeah. So How old were nightmare. you when that came out? Because that was, what, 95? I think it was like 7 or 8, yeah. Alright. I can't see anything, man. The first time I saw E.T. as a kid, when he was in the closet and screamed, that scared the bejesus out of me. I think for E.T. when he was, you know, the white version, like, dying in the world. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. no, E.T. Uh, but yeah, Dark Crystal, I actually, uh, Crystal probably agree, or maybe you've been there. Uh, I have, my husband has family in Atlanta, so every once in a while yeah. we'll go up there. And I've been to the Puppetry Museum there. Center of Puppetry Arts, yeah. yeah. I've been there on field trips and when I was in elementary school, yeah. We were there, like, three years ago for, for the first and only time there, and... Uh, Jim Henson display was traveling. So they had Dark Crystal and Labyrinth stuff. And it was amazing. Oh, man. They've had a... They've had Muppets up there, and I've... I wanted to go, but I haven't been to Georgia in a few years, so... So, Dark Crystal. uh, Yeah, what scene would you put Okay, so we're talking, like... Would it still be, like, the U-turn, like, the ride has? Like, enough space Yeah, yeah, I mean... It's... Listen, we don't have a budget on your ride. (laughs) Well, you do it how you want to do it. I feel like when you enter the when you enter that space, it would be like um, the caves under the castle was where you mm. would start. And as you're turning the corner, where like the old Starfield is for Alien, it'd be those spider crab creatures that were scuttling around. Oh, those guys! Those like human size, like big, 
big cockroach spider crab things, and it you would be even like have it like come at you a little right. bit, and not like yeah. scurry like a little, behind... the legs move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things are terrifying. This is, um, this is, yeah, this is great. But then I feel like if you went to the cave and then you end up in the, I don't even know. I I call it the throne room. I just want that scene where all of the Skakesies are absorbing the power of the crystal. It's that would be... it's like the crystal would be floating in the middle and then they would be around. It would be off to like yeah. your left probably. Maybe maybe we could have a floating and instead of like Indiana Jones, like. That scene will push well, was, that back a little bit. I was thinking like Haunted Mansion where they have the glow, the, the lady's head globe floating and you could have like that circular, like them surrounding it kind of sort of yeah. maybe. But like it's floating above you and they're to the left and right of you like you're just riding right through their little powwow thing. Yeah, and then maybe um, the, the two gulflings are hiding off like you hear them and then you know you turn the corner and they're there and at the end before you leave another spider crap would come on the right and scare you <laughs> so, instead of side there alien you go. it would just be side spider crab side spider crab <laughs> and then we'd I'm have sure a spare spider crab under the curtain someone's gonna listen to this to this episode and like you know message me and be like actually this is what the creature's called yeah Which, probably hey future person if there is a name for that creature let me know let us all know. Um, and then we're just going to create the Dark Crystal ride. Another spinoff ride. It's going to happen. That would be really fun to drive through, if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> spider craps. Um, we're going to go into action adventure. And thank God it's not Tom Cruise's mummy. Cause, oh. But uh, it's the original. It's kind of a remake-ish. They remade the franchise. Uh, but it's Brendan Fraser's classic 1999, The Mummy. I remember seeing this. I didn't get to see it at the theater, but my dad and mom got it on DVD and brought it home. And they were like, hey, watch this. And I watched it, and it was just, holy crap, that is so cool. And one of the, I don't know, it, it was a fun movie. It was action-packed. And Brendan Fraser, um, I have missed him in the acting world. Um, I remember in in Encino Man. I think that's how you say it. Yes. I'm gonna read that Pauly part. Shore I remember did. him in Encino Man with Polly Shore, and I remember seeing that as a kid and just laughing hysterically at how dumb that movie was. And then getting to see him do Airheads, which is another fun one, and then The Mummy. It was a uh, yeah, it was a nice change of pace uh, for Brendan Fraser, uh, especially after Dudley Do Right. <clears throat> and. Uh, <laughs> Which, I can't remember. It's possible Dudley Do-Right was after The Mummy. I, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it The was. fact that you brought it up, you should probably just use the gun. Because I said Dudley Do-Right? Because you brought it up, yeah. Thank I you. don't know. Oh, uh, it so was the same year. Dudley Do-Right came out in 99? They were both in 99. Oh, I wonder if you filmed them back to back or like... I have I, no I, idea. I, I, I need to look at this now. I need to find this out. Um, so what about uh, Brendan Fraser's Mummy um, makes it your favorite action adventure feature? Okay, so first off, The Mummy was my first ever date as a 16-year-old girl. Uh, I had a, a guy invite me on a date, and he was like, let's go see this brand new movie called The Mummy. And I remember being like, cool. And the second the movie started, it was like this, this guy next to me didn't even exist. <laughs> I ignored him the entire time because the movie was that good. I, <laughs> I still remember the one preview in front of the movie was for Wild Wild West with Kevin Klein. Oh, and Will no. Smith. The Wild Wild West. <laughs> Infamously known as the movie that Will Smith ditched The Matrix to make. And, wow. Uh, and if that's what uh, happened, we thank him sad. for it. Yeah, he was going to do The Matrix and then turned it down because it was too smart for him. At least that's what I've read. And then went and did Wild Wild West because he thought it was going to be huge. And it was horrible. And uh, Matrix. Well, I'm glad he I'd did, though. Hate, I'd hate to hear a rap about The Matrix. So <laughs> <laughs> would, it, would it have its own... If Will Smith had made The Mummy, <laughs> could you imagine... Or, I'm sorry, The Matrix. If Will Smith made The Matrix, would he have actually made a theme song for it? Oh, God. Oh, 100% sure. It would have been like Men in Black. With Cisco and all. 
That's hysterical. Did you say it was Cisco? <laughs> yeah, he was in a music video with a silver hair. I remember this. That's song. right. Oh, oh my god. Oh man. Kevin Klein was. I, I liked him, but the whole movie, the movie as a whole, was just no. Anyways, back to Mummy. Back okay, to Mummy. Okay, pronounced Calvin. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the Mummy. I feel like it's just a perfect mixture of everything. Uh, Brendan Fraser is um, at that point easy on the eyes for all the ladies. Uh, Rachel Weiss, uh, she's hysterical. And easy the, on the eyes. Sorry. And easy on the eyes. I yes, she is. Uh, the actor yeah. who played Hey-o. Benny is like the best comic relief ever. Benny. Uh, the whole story, like just the whole storyline, you know, it's got a little bit of romance. It's got more action. Um, the CGI actually wasn't like that. Aw- n- the CGI wasn't that awful, except for the whole. Um, storm cloud where the moon was the big face. <laughs> that I, one... I, don't... I was like, please tell me that you're gonna at least bring that part up. Yeah, because no, that part, that was... I admit, I admit, that part can be like, we're talking the first mummy. The second mummy with the whole um, Dwayne Johnson scorpion oh, team, no. that CGI sucks. And then the no, whole see... franchise went down from there. No, I, see, yeah, I, haven't I seen loved the third one. it. And then the Scorpion King movie with is himself i was totally into that i was like yes the rock i was also into wwf at the time <laughs> yeah that's that's fine i mean and I, the second one's good it, it, then the cgi was kind of weird but did not watch the third one because everybody was like it's yeah I no seen the third one either. what was that Dr- tomb of the dragon emperor or something that's the one something with like uh that. yeah with uh jet lee Jet Li, i don't think i ever saw it either i think i saw and- one two and then scorpion king and i was like i'm good and then Rachel Weiss is no longer playing the wife. It's yeah. some other actress, and it's like, no, it's not the same. I don't know. They did that in Back to the Future, Back to the Future too, and they turned out great. So <laughs> don't judge them, okay? Wait, Rachel and Weiss was in Back to the Future? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I they was changed. wondering how long it was going to take for Gabe to talk Chris, about Back to the, the Future gun. 3. Chris the gun. <laughs> Thank you so much. Every oh, every previous episode you guys have had, Gabe has find found some way to bring up Back to the Future Three. He always does. <laughs> Listen, Six it just doesn't get enough. Everybody gives it so much slack, and I, you know, I, I don't think it's that bad of a movie. I'm not saying it's an Oscar award winning film, but Back to the Future is a great movie, and that's why it's in my Western scene with Five O Goes West. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs> Probably, I mean, I don't know if you're gonna ask me which scene I'm gonna do, but yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, what scene from the Mummy would you put into your version? So here's the deal, because for the Mummy, um, you know how in Raiders it used to be snakes, why it had to be snakes? Yeah. Good. In the Mummy, um, um, Imhotep's afraid of cats. <laughs> so, uh, but but listen, but listen. I am not going to use the cat scene. the The scene when they're in the hotel room and he tries to come and take them, and um, O'Doyle throws the cat, and the cat hisses. Like that's not exactly what I want to do. I just want to have the opportunity to have the gangster say, "Cats, why do they have to be cats?" <laughs> like he's because you're scared of cats. No, but the uh, the scene I would probably use would be. Uh, probably towards the end when they're dealing with, like, the Book of the Dead and, you know, probably one of the big scenes where, um, the mummy starts, like, you know, he gets really scary and starts opening his mouth real big, but I feel like that scene needs something gold in it and wasn't, I think the Book of the Dead was his big gold book. Oh, I think so, yeah. So, I think it would be down in Imhotep's tomb. Like, you could have, like... In the scene, you could have, like, the... On the one side, you could have, like, um, the, the the sarcophagus when they pour the cockroaches in to kill him. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, with all the snakes, we should have all the, the beetles yeah, that's, around. Yeah, scarabs. Oh, my God. That's yep. what Those I'm talking about. And then the ride just stops, <laughs> and then you have a guy, the curse, it's real! And then you start going backwards, <laughs> and it turns into the roller coaster. Uh, and uh, then, <laughs> I love that What just ride happened? <laughs> Would have been nice if I'd got my cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I um, love. I gotta say, I love that coaster. I really do. The theming on that ride is incredible. 
So that coaster opened the weekend that I left my college program. Oh. And that was, uh, it was like May 20th, 2004. And Brendan Fraser was rumored to be there for the opening. And I remember like literally leaving college programming housing at Vista Way and crying to my dad that I wanted to go to Universal to ride the ride because I had the 1% chance of seeing Brendan Fraser. <laughs> And it's got the coffee. 20 year old me back then, and my dad was like, You're ridiculous. Let's go home. Oh, goodness. And of course, uh, when I moved back down here a year later, I wrote it all I wanted. So Of course, of course. I, I have to say, I've, after I came down and I uh, I got a pass, I, I think that might be one of the coasters I've ridden the most, or one of the rides, period, I've ridden the most there. It's just it's such a fun ride. It's so good. But I wonder for that scene too, would it be do- too distracting if I did the river scene? Because then you could split the room. No, so. I mean you can, you can do what you want. It's your it's your movie ride. You do. What I know. You want. I, I feel like it's it, your ride, it, and you can do what you want. It to. deserves that that area. I feel like really should be the one of the many tomb scenes. It's just that my favorite line is, "Look who's got all the horses." <laughs> hey Benny, look who's on the wrong side of the river. I, you know, thinking about it, I wish there was a way, like you know, have the whole like gangster go up to the top because he sees this big jewel in the room and he grabs it, and instead of like the smoke and him flipping around, it's just you know, um, the the beetles take over his whole body. Yeah, so, like, there's a projector. Could do like you a see that, and all of a sudden, like, just like, yeah. He's like spinning around, but you don't notice that because it looks like some like a beetle's eating them, and all of a sudden, poof, just clothes fly up in the air, and you're like, "Where do you go?" Did you say? And it looks like the beetles are eating him. And we're not talking about the band, right? Chris, because I know last episode you know, with Chris, Pat, Chris, last episode with Pat, we talked about the beetles. I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Christopher, you have the gun, and you know what to do. What <laughs> do you keep calling me, Christopher? <laughs> Sound like my mom, you know you're Christopher. <laughs> and yes, she Thank sounds you. deep, deep tone like that. That's my mom, Christopher. No, <laughs> that would be like the mummy. Your soul is mine. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we could do so much with the mummy. Which you know, just granted, it's a ride already. So there you go. Uh, we're gonna move into your horror thriller, and I am so excited about this. This was probably. The first movie that I remember growing up watching that had, like, horror aspects to it. My dad showed it to me because there was this loony, goofball, silly character. And Bruce Campbell has become one of my favorites because of this movie. And Army of Darkness is just one of the best. It is one of my favorites. And just the line, shop smart, shop S smart. I will never... <laughs> and. There's my boomstick. It's just, oh, God, so good. What about Army of Darkness uh, makes it your favorite horror thriller? Probably because, I mean, I I love all kinds of horror, but I feel like, I wouldn't call it comedy horror, but it is kind of, com- I feel like those are the easiest to, like, n- like, dip your toe in the pool kind of thing. It's like dark comedy horror. Yeah, black comedy, like dark comedy, like that kind of stuff. Um... I watched that movie first before I watched Evil Dead 1 or 2, so I remember going back to Evil Dead and being like, this movie's kind of, you know, interesting. (laughs) Of course, Evil Dead 2 was a little bit more spoofy like Army of Darkness. Um, I like Bruce Campbell, same thing, kind of like Brendan Fraser. Back then, he was kind of easy on the ass. Uh, (laughs) His character just exudes confidence, like, super confident. Um, just the writing, like, you literally just said, obviously, the best two no lines of that movie. Oh, yeah. And then the third one being Groovy Baby. <laughs> I couldn't take all of them. <laughs> I, uh, I remember when that hurricane that we, uh, almost didn't have, well, we didn't have, actually, that was about to come through Florida, and I posted, uh, when you're trying to pronounce the hurricane coming through, and I put the claw to... <laughs> Veratu <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, and uh, I remember you commenting, "This is the best." Because I, 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 I love Army of Darkness. There's so oh, yeah. many great quotable moments about it. But that's what, and I saw it the same as you. I saw Army of Darkness first, and then I went back and saw Evil Dead One and Two. And the fact that 
Um, Evil Dead 1 didn't pan out as well as they wanted it to, but, you know, nowadays it's, it's a cult classic. And so they remade it purposely as a screwball horror movie with Evil Dead 2. And then we just got the continuation of it with Evil Dead 3, or Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 3. Uh, I just... I just wanted more. I wanted more, and then years later we got a remake of the movie, which was that was crazy. And yeah, then, that movie was crazy, and then and they I, made a, a Halloween Horror Night house out of it. I've heard about that, yeah. Uh, but I still haven't sat down and watched the whole series yet. The three seasons of Ash vs. Evil Dead. I'm not sure if you have, but my wife is a huge fan of him. Um, got to meet him at a convention, and uh, we, we, we love Bruce Campbell, and I still need to sit down and watch the show, but it's, it's such a great series. Yeah, we saw, we saw the first season, and then same thing, Halloween Horror Nights made a, a house out of the TV series, and that was so much fun to go into. I heard good things about it. I, at the time, had not partaken into the, uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Um, my first year was out, the last year, actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, I've had I've had Gabe scare me plenty of times at Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> I actually uh, I'm not a fan <laughs> of haunted houses and that whole setup. Um, never have been. Uh, I don't know if it's something with my anxiety or something. But last year it was my wife's thirtieth and she loved going. And I was like, look, I don't know how to top myself, so I'm just gonna get drunk and go. So we went, and uh, Gabe That's was working right Ghostbusters. Method. Yeah, yeah. So. So Gabe was working at Ghostbusters, and he walked us through the house, and that was that was really fun. Uh, the Universal Monsters was great. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, man. That house was so much fun. And uh, we did 9 of 10. I think the only one we didn't do was House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, I love that movie. And then, which was horribly surprising, was next day, uh, was it Sid Hag? He passed away Sid the next Hague, yeah. day. I forgot who said it, but somebody looked at me and said, it's because you didn't go through the house. And I was like, oh my god, that's horrible! <laughs> Which I we ended up watching the movie, because um, I had never seen it. But and, uh, it's I've never done Halloween Horror Nights, and I've heard all these stories about Evil Dead, and The Shining, and all these great houses that have been done. And you know, now that I'm getting more and more into horror because of my wife, I've... I'm starting to ease my way into it, and it's just, you know, like we have that Shutter app, and we watch movies all the time and I'll just sit down and back in the day I would be like I don't know I don't know and now I'm just like oh that was cool <laughs> it's it's like just second nature now and it's uh I don't know I, I I've you're getting into them slowly but surely yeah it's yeah surely. it's 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 great that I've grown into it at <laughs> my 34 uh, years of age I'm finally into horror stuff my brother and I love horror, and he also has Shudder, and he constantly wants me to watch stuff. There not there, like, a host with, like, three names? Uh, like, so Joe Bob Briggs does a, uh, it's a wonderful, it's like, you know, like a watch-along, and he has commentary and facts on the movies, and it's like, it's called The Last Drive-In, and he used to do the show on TNT back in the day called Monster Vision. And he's just like this commentator that, you know, he, I think he's done like journalistic writing and uh, he has a couple books out. And he is a like classic B horror fan. And he has this show that he'll, he'll do like a double feature. And it'll just be, sometimes it'll be like cult classics, like he's had Heathers on there. And then it'll just be obscure movies. Like he was in one called Hogzilla, that's a complete horrible movie but uh his the production com uh, crew actually got it to surprise him that they were playing it he had no idea about it and it, it's just this really fun self-aware horror fan show that you watch along and you get some facts about it and you're and there's like this family this group of people they're called the, the fans call themselves mutants mutant family and uh it's just really, and there's Facebook groups for the the fans and all sorts of stuff. He does live shows. He was just at the Indian Theater last week uh, for the Florida Film Festival, and I completely missed it. Um, but he did a live show there with uh, he has a like a co-host, Darcy the Mail Girl, and uh, they they do all these live shows. They've been at Spooky Empire, which we've seen them, but this was before we got Shutter. And it's this wonderful show. I know I've been going on for a moment. But it's if you're if you're into that stuff, I highly recommend it. And 
it's the whole reason we're keeping Shudder is because of his show and it supports his his antics and it's it's just it's so fun i really enjoy it and that is another thing that's helped me get into horror too is just watching his show with my wife and it's something that we get to sit down and and you can, even after they air it they'll air it live they'll have it later that you can just stream it whenever so you can catch up on the seasons of it and and watch all the, the tidbits and stuff it's 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 really fun yeah i need to get that be horror movie fans are like the best like i feel oh, like yeah. a lot of people are like oh yeah i've seen this means to horror film and i'm like you need to watch this stuff but um army of darkness also has a lot of practical effects so a lot of their monsters are like you can clearly tell like it's a guy in a suit trying to be a skeleton but it oh, makes yeah. it even it makes it even funnier and they did the uh uh what's his name harry Housen. He did, like, all the claymation features for, like, skeletons and stuff like that. Great, great animator for movies, for live action. Um, but they did a couple bits of animated styling for the characters in Army of Darkness that were was a throwback to him. So, like, when the people were coming out of the graves and stuff like that, and, like, Evil Ash was raising people, that, there was kind of some throwback to his artistic styles. And, I, oh, God, I love that movie so much. I really do. Thank you for putting that on your list. I'm so happy to talk about Army of Darkness. I, I just like how they're in medieval times and he's trying to explain it's stuff. And they're so just like, funny. what? Just, the car just falls and you, he's just like, I have, you know, a chainsaw for a hand and my shotgun, which is my boomstick. <laughs> Gabe, have you seen Army of Darkness? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, you need to see this movie. Have you seen any of the Evil Dead movies? Just just shoot me. <laughs> so, so, I was picking so, the gun up as there was silence, knowing what, what is going to be your answer. <laughs> oh my so gosh. another former great movie writer is actually um, in a play, Evil Dead Musical. Yeah, so, I, I tried to go see that, but we uh, we had something come up and we didn't get to go. So my husband did the, the lighting for that show the two years they, they did it. Because that was and, the Moonlight Theater, right? Yes, which yeah. sadly no longer exists because of Claremont renovating their downtown. Different story. But um, that show, I don't know if either of you guys have been in the theater, that theater. It's super small if it's like... If you're if, lucky, if it's like sixty people, was it down? Was it downtown? Yeah. Yeah. My friends, I had some friends who got married at uh, married at a theater there. It's possible that was the same theater. I'm not sure. Probably. Okay. Um, but the the show is absolutely amazing, and the songs are super hysterical. But there's so much blood in this show. <laughs> I've seen pictures that they. Because the show originated in Vegas, in general. Like, it's been yeah. produced everywhere. And they advertise the first four rows as, like, the blood splatter zone. And uh, former great movie writer Jess Sudeiky was in the last year's production. And he was okay. phenomenal. But there's parts of the show where, like, the whole cast is just drenched in blood. Wasn't and Caitlin could... in that show, too? Yes! I feel bad for forgetting her. Oh, my God. Yeah, she played the sister that turned evil because she yeah, died. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it was such a good show. I mean, I'm I'm partial because I watched a lot of it because my husband was always at the theater. Oh yeah. So uh, I I'm or sad he, I didn't he would get always send me. It. Yeah, he would send me videos, and I'd be like, "That looks really cool." Uh, but yeah, then when you, when you get to see it live, it was even better. But by the end of the show, they would just be drenched in like the fake blood. I have to wonder if if we do Army of Darkness, if I could somehow include a fake fake blood splatter somehow. Well, guess <laughs> what it's about to be, and I was about to say, wait, have we done that part yet? Where you make the scene, you should just have the room just fill with blood and just splatter on everybody. <laughs> where well, is, this, goes. is this where the tour guide switches out? This is where oh, I uh, I am no more. Oh, and Gabe finally. comes back. Yeah, I know. I can shut up now. <laughs> hey! Hey, you guys! Wrong with you. I know. I feel like you would leave because you maybe like same thing a jewel or something would be there and then the tour guide would be like you have to say the magic words to I claim the jewel i was gonna say i should go up and read the book wrong and then oh yeah then the it should be some be weird way that gabe is like evil me could you both be in the same like would he have a robe on that would be like a gangster robe 
It would just be a poncho. It would be, yeah, <laughs> right? Because there's blood everywhere. It would be a poncho I don't, that had, like, it was black poncho with white pinstripes. Ah. And then he would read it wrong. He would die. Blood splatters everywhere. And I'm like, ha ha, ta da. I don't know. We, we could have some way to. To, to read the book. I would just love to read the book wrong and just like the whole area just blow windy and blood and lightning and I don't know. We could have some fun with it. Yeah. No, that sounds amazing. I, th I think I would like that. Gabe, I know your favorite <laughs> that we've done is Scream so far because, you know, you love Scream. Well, but I think, my favorite. I think whatever we could pull with Army of Darkness would probably be one of my favorite moments on the ride because I, oh God, I love that movie so much. I might just ask my wife if we can watch it later now. <laughs> it's so good. Nice. It's so good. Well, Chris doesn't know how to read, so now we're going to move on with the ride. That's, what, that's, that's all it. You shot me. I hope that was at yourself. That was for me, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm... oh okay. I, you, didn't, you didn't say anything. You just shot off, so I wasn't sure if you just didn't like my joke or if you were... I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> we're going to... We're gonna we're gonna keep on strolling along, and we're gonna change the vibe a little bit and go into the drama and romance section of the ride. S set the mood. Um, uh, the first one we're gonna talk about is Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Um. So I've seen this twice, and I'm not gonna lie to you when I say I wasn't really paying attention. I was only there because of the girl that I was <laughs> talking to wanted to watch it. So here's still Pride and Prejudice. I know that everyone's gonna automatically think the Keira Knightley version. I I almost want it to be the the mini series. I don't even know if you would even count that as a movie. The one that had Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy. Oh, uh -huh. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. See, I would want the Pride and Prejudice versus Zombies. See, <laughs> let's be I mean, real. Out of horror, let's be real. Match I, it somehow. I love that version. That's the guy who wrote the book Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. And it all comes together. Yes. So I, you don't understand how close I was to putting that as a joke. And I was like, no, we'll see. It um, really could no, be the bridge from horror. We could just have the zombies there where the ghouls <laughs> were going before Tarzan. And then it just goes in the Pride and Prejudice. Wouldn't, that that would, be, would be absolutely great because um, I enjoyed Lily, Lily James as Lizzie Bennett in... Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. But I still would want Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy, not the guy who played him in that movie. Or... Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not Kira Knightley. That's a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm telling you, you can have zombies. No, wait, it is Kira Knightley, but it's a zombie. <laughs> oh, poor Kira oh, Knightley. Oh, no. We can just um, have zombies lurking in the background. Then yeah. you can decide for yourself if it's Pride and Prejudice, or is it Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? <laughs> Who knows? Um, but what about this movie or book or the, the zombie version? Whichever one you want to talk about, what makes it uh, your favorite drama slash romance? Well, it's my favorite book of all times. So I read it like every year. So... Uh, the miniseries obviously is a little bit longer. It's like six hours. It's it's just it's the whole. I feel like for women, it's the whole like you know you got this guy who's kind of like an asshole, but then in the end he comes around. And he's basically like, I'm sorry, I love you. Let's get married, and things happen along the way. And it's it's a story that all happens to her, the main character, Lizzie Bennet, and then. She just happens to fall in love along the way. Uh, Not to be confused with Lizzie Borden. <laughs> who had a really sharp axe. It's a whole different story. Oh, wait, it's still, we can get some zombies in there and it'll be the same. It'll be fine. I mean, true. So before I ask you the scene, we're going to actually talk about two movies in here. Um, your second movie is a movie I don't think we've talked about. Titanic. You guys haven't talked about Titanic yet? Oh my god. I think if anything, we've briefly touched it, touched on it, or I've just made the joke, it's been 84 years. Wait <laughs> I think it's just been either, like, further down a list that we haven't gotten to it because something else, like, higher up on someone's list hasn't been talked about. But, yeah, we haven't talked about it yet. Somehow. Well, for Titanic, I just love the the costuming, the, the grandeur of the whole movie. And... 
Same thing, like I've said previously in this whole podcast, Leonardo DiCaprio, kind of easy on the eyes. Also, Kate Winslet, kind of easy on the eyes. They're very pretty Draw people. Me like one of your French girls. <laughs> uh, I, when did that movie come out? 97? That was the first movie I ever saw in theaters more than once while it was still active as a new movie. Like, I think I saw it like four times. Yeah, it came out in 97. Yeah, I, was I didn't see 14. it in theaters. I remember um, we'd rented from Blockbuster uh, both cassettes. Because um, you had changed it out halfway through. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. And the then I remember. Cassette, I was, yes. <laughs> I remember watching it and then that scene where he does draw her like one of his French girls. My mom made me hide behind the couch because she didn't <laughs> see that. Because I was only nine years old. I, I've had that happen. So is that the scene you're going to put? No. Oh, uh, well I've then. Had, my parents have done the whole <laughs> everybody, fast forwarding. Every, everybody duck in a vehicle, please. Thank no. you. Oh, we um, ride through this scene. We'll just Let's blur be real. out the places. I would, do the, I would do the cheesy. So if we're talking like if we have, you're going from Pride and Prejudice to, to Titanic, um, I would probably have Pride and Prejudice, like, you know, they're outside, whatever, and then Titanic would be where Casablanca is. So you still have the scrim effect, but it would be them doing the "I'm the king of the world," and oh, where they're holding okay. each other and they're flying on the bow of the ship. I guess that or the scene where they're in the car and you see it. <laughs> <laughs> you really want that spicy Nobody stuff on the ride, Gabe? No, no, Gabe. You know what scene? That's a spicy meatball. What scene I would really want oh, is God, them. No. <laughs> where's Where's the gun? Sorry. <laughs> Um, I if there it is. It was a little delayed. If we could figure it out with the animatronics, it'd be really fun to do the part where they're drunk dancing, where they're just going in a circle. Yes. <laughs> no, I think that would honestly. I think that would be easy. Like if you set it upright, like high enough where you don't see that just the whole floor rotates around them, yeah. and they're just holding each. Other. Okay, I like that. Or or we could have it where. Um, just their feet are glued to like a rig below and the floor is only open enough to have like the the beams go around in a circle nice. if that makes okay, sense okay i like that yeah. i'm i'm honestly going to be a little you know i'm going to jump into your ride i would i would actually do that scene where they like first meet and she's about to jump off the back and that whole like monologue oh. scene i feel like that's like a really good scene and you could take up all that space and i think it'd be interesting but no, it's your ride. I'm not going to take over it, but that's just Yeah, my, it, okay. My if we could figure out the logistics, the part where they're dancing below deck, I think would be a fun scene. But in reality, the classic where they're on the bow of the ship would probably work just as well. I got it. Another spinoff ride, Titanic the Ride. There we go. <laughs> At the end, because the ride took so long, you're just like, it's been 84 years. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know where you were going with that, and I thought you were going to say that uh, the vehicle was going to flood up like uh, the log flume at... Uh, oh. Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. <laughs> Did you guys okay. see the meme where they took Leo and Kate Winslet and put yeah, them on in the, the flume? Yeah, on the outside. Yeah. This is wonderful. Wonderful. Awesome. Um, so we're going to jump out of the drama and switch it up a little bit. We're going to keep with the underwater theme. Too soon. Um, we're gonna go into your favorite animated movie, which is The Little Mermaid. Stick a fork which, like in you it. Said... <laughs> Sorry, I had okay, to. Okay, shoot both of us. Shoot both of us. Okay, there we go. All right, we can continue on with the show. Um, yeah, we're gonna uh, try that again. Yeah, so The Little Mermaid. Uh, why is it your favorite animated movie? So that movie came out when I was six. And um, I do not think I saw it in theaters originally, but my mom bought it on VHS. Basically, you know how everyone's complaining about how people watch Frozen too much? That's what Little Mermaid was back to girls in the 80s. It was like the tape that you like wore out because it was your favorite movie. I can't imagine the, the like summer festivities for Little Mermaid, wet summer fun instead of Frozen summer fun. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that would awkward title, anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I got all the 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 classic like one after the other. I got like you know Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and Light, like all like one year after the other. So it was it was good to be a kid of the eighties and nineties. But 
that movie, I think it was just, you know, you're six and it's a fantasy about, you know, a mermaid that wants to become a human and just really catchy songs and then your mom buys it and you have instant access to it for, you know, until you bleed the VHS dry. Yeah, and I mean, it's like that whole, like, you know, you, you have that fantasy with the Disney princess, but this is like a whole different spin because like, oh, it's a mermaid, yeah. you know, because, you know, like with Beauty and the Beast and stuff like that, like, you're like, oh, okay, the cups and all that come alive. There's a beast who turns into human and stuff, but this is like, oh, he's in the ocean. So now you have that whole aspect, like, now you go to the beach and you're like, do the whole pose on the sand. And you're like, look, mom, I'm a little mermaid. And like, Gabe, stop it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> um. But sweet, awesome. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a great movie. It's obviously one of the uh, the classic Disney princess movies. Um, so you could keep it traditional, like Fantasia was, where it's just a screen, or you could go buck wild and do this whole scene. What would you do with your Little Mermaid scene for our animation? So my favorite song is "Kiss the Girl," but let's be real, the ride already does that. Uh, the ride in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, uh, I love Kiss the Girl because I, I like to sing the, the background whoa, whoa part. <laughs> wow, I can't, I can't wow, sing that wow. well, so I just sing that part. Like, I let anyone else sing the other part, and I do the whoa, whoa. <laughs> or, you know, That's whatever fine. Skell does. Um, I'm good. <laughs> you know what scene I would like to see done in a larger scale is the scene where um, Ursula dies, but I feel like that would be a little bit tragic. <laughs> Listen, I you know, we've had past guests come on the show and I think even my like my ride there was like tear like made kids cry or whatever. So it's fine. <laughs> I I was kinda hoping you were gonna see that scene because that'd be cool if like, you know, Ursula's on your right and the ship's on your yeah, right. Yeah, like just have the ship Over and you, she would be huge and just it wouldn't get to the point where she would actually die, but it'd be like the last battle. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. All right, I like that. I'm okay with that. I'll allow it. <laughs> um, all right, and then we're going to hit to our final scene, my favorite new scene of uh, the great movie ride, the comedy scene, something we really wasn't on the ride, uh, but we're going to cover it. Um, and you did a last-minute change on us, um, and you brought up the 1985, I feel like it's a cult classic. If you haven't seen it, I've seen it, so that says a lot about it. But Clue, uh, starring, you know, Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh, we'll God. The future a bit. No, I'm just kidding. Um, of all the we'll people. about Clue. <laughs> and Tim Curry. Oh, yeah. But Tim Curry was in the Back to the Future, so we can't talk about it. Uh -huh. um, so, what about it was, makes it your favorite comedy? So, it was, uh, I wouldn't say it wasn't the first movie I ever saw with a quote-unquote twist ending, but it's just. The, the 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 gags the laughs like never stop like once they get going they never stop the entire movie is just one gag or one funny line after the other and I really enjoy Tim Curry and that's probably my second or third favorite movie with him in it um but yeah like Christopher Lloyd and uh, Madeline Kahn who I grew up liking because of Mel Brooks movies. So, same thing for her. It was fun seeing her in a different movie that wasn't a Mel Brooks film. And there are, yeah, just so many gags. Um, Universal City Walk used to host a live shadow casting of Clue. They would either do Rocky Horror Picture Show or Clue. Oh, see, I did not know. Oh, yeah, well, they stopped That's doing it. It was the the rich weir weirdos. So, Clue had um, drinking rules. So, it was like, any time that someone screamed, um, the lights went out. Glass broke. Uh, lightning hit. Um, people moved from one, one room to the other. Like, there was like eight or nine rules. And if you weren't careful, you were drunk as a skunk, like, you know, 20 minutes into the movie. But it was, it's a fun movie, and like I said, all the cast plays so well off each other. But yeah, Madeline Kahn's my For favorite sure. out of all of them in that movie. But before we ask what your favorite scene is, I'm going to take a wild guess at your favorite Tim Curry movie, and it's probably 
the wild thorn berries meet the Rugrats? <laughs> Am I right? No, no. It's it's a movie you guys have either never heard of or have never seen. Hit me with the, it. The now, youngest now witch. I need to know. What'd you call me? <laughs> Holiday Hoobie Waddy. Have you never heard of a movie called The Youngest Witch? I no. no yes. Okay, it was right around the time of Return to Oz because it had Feruza Balk in it. Oh. It is a about a school for witches, and he is the wizard headmaster. That sounds awesome. What is and this he called is again? The youngest witch, or the worst witch. It, it it's for some reason it's one of those movies that it changes titles depending on what country you're in. All right, Harry Potter. <laughs> it's it's I almost want to say it's it's uh, almost like a like a. Not that Harry Potter was inspired by it, but it is a witch school or yeah. wizard school. So it's called the youngest witch, or what's the other one? The worst witch. Letterbox has it as the worst witch, but they're based okay. out of New Zealand, so that makes sense. I think the European title was the worst witch. Tim Curry for the ball. It's on IMDb as the worst witch. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And obviously, also, yes. Uh, and uh, he is still like, um, he's still like young Frankenstein. Not young Frankenstein. I'm sorry. He's still uh, as skinny as he was in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm-hmm. Like he's still okay. pretty young. Oh, I forget if Clue came out. Probably right after that. Wasn't Clue like uh, late eighties? Clue was oh, 1995, so it was a so year So, like, before. a year afterwards, yeah. I It's the same thing. It was an obscure movie that either my mom had a copy of, or it was on TV a lot, or something like that, but he was in it, gotcha. and then I didn't see um, Rocky Horror Picture Show until I was a little bit older, because my, my parents wouldn't play that one for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Clue, Clue I saw a lot, and then Clue was the first movie I ever rented off of Netflix back when it first started up. Oh man, back when you had to get, get the DVD, yeah. mailed in. Nice. nice. Alright, so we'll, we'll jump back to Clue, and we'll, we'll wrap up your ride. Um, so you have this big scene in Oz, and you can make it bigger, because who needs a budget? What would you put in that comedy scene from Clue? So I feel like instead of the witch, you would have Mr. Body pop up. And then the tour guide would be like, what are we doing here? And then Mr. Bobby would be like, oh, I all called you here because... And then the lights would go out in the scene. And then when it came back up, he'd be dead, you know, on the floor. And then... Oh, that's good. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the certain characters would just come out from different scenes. So you as a tour guide or the guests would have to, like, kind of, like, turn around and, like, look at different people as they popped out from different rooms. We could even, like just have different scenarios that you've entered into and it could be different outcomes like if you're the a show it would be this scenario and if you were the b show it would be that scenario that would like be i feel like it would be really easy to just to, like you know have a recording where it's like you like before you can leave you have to guess so you just make like as the tour guide you make a random guess and then the audio plays and like that's correct or like something like that so like that way it's not the same like cuz if you script that it's you know mr you know, the Colonel Mustard in the library with the wrench every time people are some kind of randomizing if you like, scenario. Yeah, but if you like, you like here are all the characters, here are all the weapons, here are all the rooms, and you give the tour guide the option like you just choose whichever one you want. You know, because back in when I first started in 2010, like you had your script, and then there were certain parts where you'd get options like this is what I'm gonna choose. Yeah, I, I feel like um when you know how back when you were in Oz and you'd be like which way do we go, and then you kind of like point at the guests. To be like, what's your answer? Yes. I would feel like that would work out well. Who do you think did it? And then the guest would shout out whoever, and you would be like, I think Mrs. Peacock did it in the whatever. And then that's when it would go, you know, right or wrong, and then you move with the vehicle. Ah, yeah, for sure. That would be. And then if you if the if the block light's red, then they're like, oh, I guess that wasn't the right. <laughs> and then if we were current, you just keep going through. We could make it current era too. As you exited, there would. I know screens aren't the most profound part of an attraction, but it's easier to do this with the randomizing versus having an animatronic there. But you could have the person who did it um, as you're exiting. They're like on a screen, like 
kind of, you know, how did you catch me? Or how did you know? Or, you know. That's pretty know. funny. That would be pretty I, cool. I don't know. Technology. Yeah, man. That would be really fun, actually. Clue the ride. Let's just make Clue the ride. Let's do it. We've created, All like, six different rides already today. <laughs> um, I always felt... Welcome to the Great Movie <laughs> Radio Show, when we create a whole new park. Pretty Every much. time. Uh, I always felt bad, because the first, like, maybe, like, six years that I ever watched that movie, um, Miss Scarlet, who is played by Leslie Ann Warren, at that age, in that movie, her and Susan Sarandon could be twins. They look very much alike. Yeah. So here, I thought Susan Sarandon was in the movie, and I was talking to someone one day, and I was like, yeah, Susan Sarandon. They're like, that's not Susan Sarandon. I'm like, well, you could have fooled me. I think I was trying to talk about the connection, but I'm like, oh yeah, Susan Sarandon and Tim Curry were in both movies together, and someone else was like, what are you talking about? Nailed it. It's fine. It's only your. Yeah, <laughs> You're good. I mean, oh, I've man. educated myself on who that lady is now. So, but yes, she. They look very, very, very similar. They do. I was uh, the letterbox uh, thing I was looking at. They have like a little uh, banner uh, for the movie above, like the whole like here's the cast, here's reviews, here's what everyone's rated it. It's it's a picture with all of them looking out the door, and she's right there. Yeah, she looks just like Susan Sarandon. I see it. I totally see it. Nice. Well, Mary, it was fun going around. We're going to uh, pull on to talk. Woo! Finish your great movie ride. That was that was really awesome. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. You know, Gabe, I've got an idea for finale for next season. I think I'm just going to throw out there while we're talking. We should take sure. we should take movies on her list that didn't make the cut and just try to like act out scenes horribly. <laughs> like like Inception's on her favorite sci-fi list, and my favorite part of that movie is blah. That would be my Inception. Um, <laughs> that's that's all it is. So yeah, and we just we, what we'll do is what we could do is we'll act it out. We won't say the movie. We'll just act out like small snippets of it, and then make the, you know the audience members guess like what are they. And then, like a week later, we could post like this is their list or something. I don't know something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in, or we could just no, not, we'll and that's it. part of the fun. They go figure it out for themselves, like half the people would go do after watching Finale on the ride. What is that from? <laughs> We're not going to tell you. We just work <laughs> here. Go get a churro. I don't know. That would be fun. Maybe maybe for season two. We'll, we'll, I don't know. We'll have a couple months in between. Yeah, we can, we can write out some ideas. Figure it out. Plus, I mean, looking at the list, uh, I, she's got some great ones, but I don't know any direct quotes except Army of Darkness, which I already did. And then, of course, my blah from Inception. That's actually what I would have gone with, too. If somebody would be like, in person at Inception, I'd just be like, blah. blah. <laughs> or, or if I was in person, I would do the, the eyebrow squint that Leonardo DiCaprio did in the scene uh. with... um. Um, I forget his name. Uh, shoot, he's in 28 Days Later. Oh, uh, Killian Murphy. There you go, that's his name. Yeah. I love Killian Murphy. Great actor, great actor. Well, Mary, thanks for coming on the show. It's been so much fun. I think Army of Darkness was my favorite part of the whole uh, experience, considering we were in horror for probably the longest out of the rest of the ride. As uh, it should be. As it should be. Gabe, what about you? What was your uh, favorite, not Back to the Future, part three? <laughs> well, there you go. You ruined it. No, um, I mean, that definitely was not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's just, we'll leave it at that. That was getting shot multiple times. Um, you were never a fan of like Pew Pew Cam, were you? No, I would come in dock and then get shot, and I'm like, why? why? <laughs> the amount of times I've gotten shot this episode, I feel like it would be that scene from The Mask where he's, like, drinking, and it just starts, you know, the drink starts coming up. That's, you know, another movie on my list. So, all right, we're going to segue back to my movie. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think. I think The Dark Crystal, like, how you set up that scene in the Great Movie Ride? I think the spider crabs. I'm what is that? What we call them? Crab is spider crabs. New, <laughs> new side alien. Spider crabs. Spider Which crabs. Is just spider, <laughs> spider, crab spider crab the ride, and you just ride a spider crab through Another the dark ride. crystal. Another ride. No, no, no. That's uh, where Honey. I, I was. I just playground. thought it just popped into my head. That would be fun too. Yeah. Well, you didn't think fast enough. I so. know. Uh, think fast. This. <laughs> are you the way that you are? Can I get it? Well, Christopher. 
We're just lucky that Mary doesn't have hers anymore, or else we, she'd probably just shoot us both and we wouldn't have a show anymore. Probably. Oh, okay. It'd be... <laughs> It'd be a lot easier. Mary, Mary's take yeah. over the great movie radio show. And then, <laughs> well, everything I had planned for the last two episodes, I'm not going to tell you, so just figure it out. So there you go. <laughs> well, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, Mary, again, it has been a pleasure having you on. Uh, Gabe, do you got anything before we, uh, we skedaddle? No, uh, thanks again, Mary. And not gonna lie the next episode i heard, hope it uh, goes quickly so we can get to our season finale because i'm very excited for that the gmr show game show or what like gabe likes to call it the gmr show gabe the show, gabe show. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna typo it but no we're gonna have a uh, a game show finale with uh steven newport sean cumberland and dave fesky are gonna be our three contestants for a jeopardy game of challenge with movie themes, and uh, as it happens to be, uh, Sean Cumberland and Steve Newport are our next episode's guests, so that'll be a fun time. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to The Great Movie Radio Show. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, YouTube, and wherever you listen to that biz. Have a great one. The Great Movie Radio Show is recorded in Orlando, Florida. You can visit our website at www.thegmrshow.com. Art direction and logo design provided by Mr. Bayless. Voiceover and intro work provided by Dave Feske and Joe Erickson. You can find our podcast on multiple platforms such as Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and many more. Music provided by the YouTube Audio Library. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search The Great Movie Radio Show or The GMR Show. This has been The Great Movie Radio Show. We hope you enjoy your day, and we'll see you at the movies. The stuff dreams are made of. Goodbye, everyone. You have been listening to a GMR Radio production.